and you can ex expand on this, that you had to sit out uh -huh. your first year at the University of Miami because they believe you didn't take the SAT. Tell right. the story. So that story went down like, you know, like, when you start getting notarized, right, you, okay, you that, that, that athlete that say, oh, wow, this kid here got potential. Right. They start making you take SAT early. You don't wait till your senior year. Right. right. So I started doing the prep of my sophomore year, took the test my junior year. Right. Got a score qualified, GPA, everything qualified. So my whole senior year, now all I had to do was just work on my GPA, all my test scores and everything was done. I didn't right. worry about taking, I didn't take no SAT or nothing my whole senior year. Right. Got my test scores back and everything. So if you if your SAT get questioned, I don't know if y'all know this, but if your SAT score get questioned, you do not get it back. Right. They send you a letter in the middle, say we found some unspecious things going on. We right. want you to retake. I got my SAT scores back. Right. So my whole senior year, I was qualified. Right. GPA was like a, a 3.1, 3.1, 3.2. So I was good. Just no 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 worry about no school or nothing. So on my college visit, um, I don't know if you know that story, but the only school that then offered me a scholarship was SC. That's the only school I never I got never got a four ride. Everybody else I could have went to. Right. Uh, so I went on a college visit and um one of the coaches wanted me real bad. So I promised him I would take a, a, a visit, you know, because right. you get five visits. So I promised I would take a visit there, you know, and visit him and really give him a shot because he really was trying hard to get me. And then um when that time got close to uh announced where I was going. I said, Coach, you know, I say out of all the recruiters, you know what I mean, you was the one that was there really, really working hard to get me. I appreciate your situation and what you were trying to do, but I'm going to go ahead and sign with the University of Miami. So he got upset. He started calling my phone every every two hours, going off. So I said, you know what, this is getting out of hand. I'm going to let you deal with my parents. Because at first I was dealing with him. I ain't tell my mom about it. I was right. dealing with him. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and let my mom deal with this situation. So my mom got the phone, she went off on him. And he called one more time, I answered the phone. And he said, you know what, if you don't come here, I promise you, you will never see a down of football in your life. So that's when I said, man, you threatening me? So we, I hung up on him, we blocked his phone, them, all that. I get to the University of Miami after signing with him. I check in the dorm room, everything, I'm good, everything. Um, the next day for practice, my counselor come to me, he said, Devin, we got a problem. I said, what's going on? He said, some some, some stuff going on with the NCAA about you. It's nothing. You shouldn't have to worry about now. You good. And so they, uh, when I got down there, we got on the phone with the NCAA. They said it's been some some phone calls about questioning your SAT scores. And I said, okay, well, what's the problem? They said, well, your answers match somebody that's sitting beside you answers. And I said, well, what did they get? And they had like a I think they scored like an 880. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what did I get? I think I scored like a 970. Right. So I say, well, who was cheating on who paper then? <laughs> if he scored an 880 and I scored a 970, my score is higher than his. Who, who y'all think cheating? They said, they feel like you were cheating. So it was up to the University of Miami to say, you know what, we're going to disregard that. And because it was up to the University of Miami to say, we're going to set these scores whether or not or not. Because right now, y'all don't have right. no proven fact. So Miami was at the point where they, when they went to the national championship in Ohio State, and they lost in Ohio State. So if I would have played that year and they would have kept investigating, if they would have found something that was out of the ordinary, Miami would have been suspended. Right. So Miami said, you know what? We can take a risk and just let you play, and then week six or seven, they come back and say it's not right, or we can sit you out and then you just come back in next year and play. And so when that happened – I had a bunch of teams like, listen, we 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 already dug into that that situation. We ready to take it. it it's nothing they can do about that situation. Okay. You got your scores, you score higher than that person. It's nothing they can do about it. But Miami said, no, nah, we're not gonna do it. And then they was like, and I told them about the situation, and they were like, listen, Dad, we just got too much to lose. Um, I will promise you this: if you if you if you just have faith in us next year and you come in, we will not give your jersey away. So they sent my jersey number four up because everybody was trying to get it. They said, no, nah, we're not going to hand out the jersey. We're going to show him that we're lower and we'll bring him in next year. And that's what happened. So that was, you believe that that coach at the, or the recruit at the university, at, at USC, you believe he had something to do with this? No, no, not, not USC, because no. USC didn't recruit him. Okay. USC never, they, USC was the only school that didn't offer me a full scholarship okay. out of all the colleges. Was the only school, but it was a college that I was, 
you know, getting recruited back. Right. Recruited you, don't, by. you don't you don't want to reveal that yeah, college? You you've been sitting nah, on that. You I'm oh, good, man. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. I'm just gonna let that go. I did I I went my first time I touched the ball in Orange Bowl. I took it 92 yards back for a touchdown, right? Mm-hmm. I took my helmet off, stared in the camera, right? I just wanted him to look me in my face. That's all. That's why I did that. If you if you go back, my first time touching the ball in the Orange Bowl, I took a 92 yard kickoff back, open the kickoff for the game. Yep. I took my helmet off, going in the end zone, looking at looking in the camera, stared at him, just so he can see my face. That's how I got him back, though. So we good now. You didn't play your entire. You didn't. So you weren't allowed to practice. Were you allowed to meet? Were you allowed to go in the cafeteria with the play? How did you stay in shape? So basically, you were like a just a regular college student. I didn't even go to school. I didn't even go to school, man. I went home. Wow. I went home, man. I went home, man. Listen, that that drive home, man, felt like I was getting sentenced to 15 to 20 years in prison, man. Right. Like, I, it was like my whole life was just gone. And it was like, it ain't nothing I can do about it, man. When I pulled up to my driveway, man, and looked at the front door and just thought about like, man, everybody that come from this era, if you don't go to college, man, you know what's finna happen to you. Mm-hmm. You finna get caught up. Right. You finna get caught up, man, and just looking at that door, I said, boy, it's over for me. So I literally like, I literally like, when I got in that, when I, once I walked through that door, man, I went to my room, closed the door. I, I don't think I ate, I, I don't think I ate or slept for like two, three weeks straight. I did not come out the room for a whole month. My mama made me shit like that. You gotta get up, man. You gotta get up, baby. You can't do this. You cannot do this. You gotta fight, man. Like I literally, I stayed in the room for two, three weeks straight without eating, and then come out the room for a whole month. I was sick, man. Like everything I worked for got taken away just all like that, that easy. Right. I was hurting, man. So your mom said, "Deb, you gotta, you, you, you can't just give up. You gotta yeah, fight." Like, so what she tells yeah. you that. Now what's going, what's, what's your thought process? I got to train. I got to make sure that when I go back, I'm in shape. I'm ready to go to say, let them know that I haven't been just sitting around. Right. So what happened was my mom called the high, my high school coach and was like, man, y'all got to find something for them to do to the time for them to go back. So my coach, man, he was like, hey, man, listen, we need to work. He said, brain, you so good. I kept everything. Brain, you so the fast and you help me and come practice with us. You give us work. And while you giving us work, you're going to get to keep yourself in shape. So I, I started going back to my high school and being on the scout team to make those guys better, man. And not only did I make them better, I was able to stay in shape. Right. And that's how I really stayed in shape, man. I went back to high school, man, after graduating and went back practicing with them being on the scout team, man. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay where we do something before two something.